Mr. and Mrs. Greg ran to the window and looked out. The two tiny boys were now high up in the sky. Then Mrs. Greg said to Mr. Greg, "Do you think we could do that, my dear?" "I don't see why not," Mr. Greg said. "Come on, let's try." Mr. Greg began to flap his wings hard, and all at once, up he went. Then Mrs. Greg did the same. "Help!" she cried as she started going up. Save me! Come on," said Mr. Greg. "Don't be afraid." So out the window they flew, far up into the sky, and it did not take them long to catch up with Philip and William. Soon the whole family was flying around and together. Oh, isn't it lovely? cried William. I've always wanted to know what it feels like to be a bird. Your wings are not getting tired, are they, dear? Mr. Greg asked Mrs. Greg. Not at all, Mrs. Greg said. I could go on forever. Hey, look down there! said Philip. Somebody's walking in our garden. They all looked down, and there, below them, in their own garden, they saw four enormous wild ducks. The ducks were as big as men, and what is more, they had great long arms like men instead of wings. The ducks were walking in a line to the door of the Greg's house. Swinging their arms and holding their beaks high in the air, stop! Called the tiny Mister Greg, flying down low over their heads. Go away! That's my house. The ducks looked up and quacked. The first one put out a hand and opened the door of the house and went in. The others went in after him. The door shut.、And、there, in the illustration, you see the four ducks looking up at Mr. Greg. The Gregs flew down and sat on the wall near the door. Mrs. Greg began to cry. "Oh dear! Oh dear!" she sobbed. "They have taken our house. What shall we do?" We have no place to go. Even the boys began to cry a bit now. <laughs> We will be eaten by cats and foxes in the night," said Philip. "I want to sleep in my own bed," said William. "Now then," said Mister Greg, "it isn't any good crying. That won't help us. Shall I tell you what we are going to do? What?" They all said. Mister Greg looked at them and smiled. We are going to build a nest. A nest, they said. Can we do that? We must do it, said Mister Greg. We've got to have somewhere to sleep. Follow me. They flew off to a tall tree, and right at the top of it, Mister Greg. Chose the place for the nest. Now we want sticks, he said. Lots and lots of little sticks. Off you go, all of you, and find them and bring them back here. But we have no hands, said Philip. Then use your mouths. Mrs. Greg and the children flew off. Soon they were back, carrying sticks. In their mouths, Mr. Greg took the sticks and started to build the nest. More, he said. I want more and more and more sticks. Keep going. The nest began to grow. Mr. Greg was very good at making the sticks stick together. 
and you see the illustration where the family is carrying sticks while Mr. Greg builds the nest. After a while, he said, that's enough sticks. Now I want leaves and feathers and things like that to make the inside nice and soft. The building of the nest went on and on. It took a long time, but at last it was finished. Try it, said Mr. Greg, hopping back. He was very pleased with his work. Oh, isn't it lovely, cried Mrs. Greg, going into it <coughs> and sitting down. I feel I might lay an egg any moment. The others all got in beside her. How warm it is, said William. And what fun to be living so high up, said Philip. We may be small, but nobody can hurt us up here. But what about food, said Mrs. Gregg. Haven't had a thing to eat all day. That's right, Mr. Gregg said. So we will now fly back to the house and go in by an open window and get the tin of biscuits when the ducks aren't looking. Oh, we will be pecked to bits by those dirty great ducks, cried Mrs. Gregg. We shall be very careful, my love, said Mr. Gregg, and off they went. But when they got to the house, they found all the windows and doors closed. There was no way in. This brings us to an end for today's reading.